Right. Finally, I'm getting round to um, the breaking down of a deer carcass. Uh, before we started, we cleaned all our equipment down and disinfected it with food safe disinfectant. The table was scrubbed down and everything was scrubbed down. The carcass, there is minimal hair on the carcass. You'll still get an odd piece, but that will be removed later. So we have a, a fallow dough here and um, we're going to break it down uh, for the freezer. So I'm going to show you a simple method of doing it and just to get presentable cuts that anyone can do at home. There's no specialist equipment needed or anything. So um, we'll start off uh, by removing the back straps. Removing the back straps is a simple, a simple thing. Keeping your knife firm, pressly, keep it pressed. To that point there, where the leg comes down, make a cut. Then decide the width of that back strap and come up along accordingly. Then along the vertebrae, run the knife along the vertebrae. You see? And the back strap literally falls away. When you hit the shoulder blade, that's it. And then simply go along like that. Peel down again like that. And there you have the back strap removed. So there is the back strap removed. Then we do the same on this side. We can actually turn our dear carcass easier for you to view. Starting about there, the knife. A flexible, a flexible boning knife is ideal for this segment of the breakdown. Choose the width of the strap that you want and then going along the vertebrae. You can see how tight it actually is right to the ribs and then it just, it's a matter of touching it, just peels back. You have some blood shot there where the, it was shot. You get you get that, but that's a, you get that with this type of thing. To remove any of the blood shot, it's simple as that. So there we have our two two back straps removed. Now. What we'll do is we'll remove the shoulder. Drawing a line there. Do you see how simple I'm keeping the whole process? I'm gathering up as much of the meat as I can. As I'm lifting the shoulder, You see, keeping tight to the bone. Then when you come to the neck fillet, draw a line. And you come back around here, following on from where you left off, running the blade along the neck. This is just removing the neck fillet. And all that actually peels away. As I said, keeping it really easy so anyone can actually do this themselves at home. Now we have the shoulder removed. So what do we do with the shoulder? We make it into presentable cuts. First of all, we trim off anything we don't like the look of. 
just coming along here. We peel that back. And then we'll run our knife. There's the neck fillet. We remove that hard tendon there. Remove that and we can remove that gland there. So there we have the neck fillet. That's what I class as a secondary cut. The back strap is a first cut, meaning it's a premium cut. Now we have the shoulder blade here. So clearing the shoulder blade, just like that. Then coming along, holding the knife like that, run along both sides of the shoulder blade. Just like that. Then just make a little cut there and the shoulder blade pops. Running your knife along underneath the shoulder blade on both sides. Then just coming underneath the shoulder blade at the top, just clearing it down. What we're actually doing here is boning. And then once you have that done, shoulder blade pops out with minimum meat on it into our scrap bucket. Now we have the shoulder blade removed. So putting our knife tight to that bone there, we peel back the meat on the shoulder on the, the bone. It's good that you, we have a, a soft table. That way it doesn't deform the edge on our knife. A quality knife, any quality knife will do, any sharp knife will do. But for boning, I prefer the flexible type. And the flexible type are quite good. And then we just, matter of clearing all the meat off that bone. keeping as much and just clearing it. That tendon can remain on the thing. There we have the shoulder boned out. Now as I said you have the shin there and all that slow cooked in a slow pot, that's absolutely fabulous. This meat can be used uh, for mincing or uh, chopped up into small pieces for stewing or for stir fry. But the, the shoulders I generally use uh, for mincing. So there's simple method in boning out the shoulder. So the shoulder has been boned out. The next thing we do is we come here and we come down here, we go inside, inside our carcass, we draw a line up along there. What we're doing here is we're actually removing the fillets. The fillets just inside the inner leg. These are known as the fillets and are a premium cut and really tasty and quick cooking. So we go high to the eye of the fillet, removing that complete muscle. And there we have the fillet. That's the fillet. Another premium cut. Then at this point, we open the leg right in the middle and follow along. What we're doing is we're following and keeping the knife tight to the bone. Once you go in a bit at all, you'll get the hip. Once you open the hip, keeping everything tight to the bone. Come along like that. Keep it really, really tight to the bone. And we follow it the whole way up along. And we remove the leg, keeping all the meat attached 
tootleg. As you can see already, we're maximizing the amount of meat we remove from the carcass. Now, sometimes a leg is too much for um, a family, like it, it, it's a lot, it would feed a lot of people, it feeds six to eight people. So we render it down. The first thing we do is we take that cut there. That's a premium cut. Then what we do is we remove that bone. Simple method is place the knife in using a pointed knife and feel it, press it hard against the bone, following it the whole way down. Again, turn your leg and do it on the opposite side. That's all boning is. Boning is completely what, now as you see, I'm only using the point of the knife. Following it. And we have that bone almost lifted, knife underneath, and down. We separate that. Now we can trim up that, we can trim up any of that. Just a piece of advice, if you're making burgers, venison burgers or anything like that, I, I, I really advise that you don't put, put the fat in through the burger because deer fat doesn't have a pleasant aftertaste. It's not like pork fat or um, other fats. So now what we need to do is holding it like that, we need a slightly larger knife like this. And we are gonna stake out the leg. Here's the steak. You can cut them to whatever thickness you want. Maybe at a later point we'll show you some recipes we use. There's really premium steaks, and that's where the steaks come from, from the leg there. But you really need a sharp knife. I have to say, they look really delicious. Unless you have a sharp knife, you could botch this very simply. And then at this point we can separate that there. Holding it there. And continue to stake out. only go so far and then you'll have to you'll have to stop but there are all steaks ready ready to go onto the pan so there we have how to bone and stake out a leg so you can put by the trays and put the individual steaks on it and they make a pleasant gift for someone Here we have the back of the leg. This does be quite tough and tendon and it's only fit really for uh, stewing. So what we do is we simply bone out that. We dispose of that because it's all tendons. Again, follow me through the whole way up and around. All we're doing is clearing meat 
off the board. I normally do this inside the house, but I took it outside because of light issues inside the house. And that's all. There we have the lake completely fallen down. Minimum and that. And as I say, all this will be going in here and will be minced. That will all be minced and made into either minced meat or burgers. Now we come to the flank. The flank is a secondary cut. So we round off where the exit wound is because of bloodshot. Bloodshot is when an animal moves after it's been hit and you get it on the meat and you don't want it on the product. So peeling back, you run the knife onto each rib. Then, at this point, you remove anything you don't like the look of. And there we have more for mincing. You can see the shape our carcass is coming now. You see minimum meat, we're using as much. You can even go back and can trim off more, more bits of meat that will go into your mincer. And that next cut we do is back here come back to the leg i want to do another method in using the leg and the first thing we have to do is we remove the fillet when you run the knife up along there holding back that you go in there at that point and get all that muscle because that's all part of your fillet. Peel it back. That's a premium cut. We can trim up anything there that we don't like the look of at a later point. Now we come back and we follow that. Just the same as the last time. we pop the hip there's the hip and uh, once you pop the hip it just follow down that's where a flexible knife comes into hand and anyone requiring any of these knives can private message me and um, we can supply them and, or anyone that's attending any of our butchery or demo days if they contact me beforehand we can bring them to them like there's no mistake in it lads you need you don't need expensive equipment, but you need quality equipment. Now, sometimes you want, so remember, our first cut is that. That's a premium, that can be roasted or anything. Next thing we can do here is just to have uh, uh, it, it in different joints. It's another way of doing smaller pieces because most people take out a piece of venison to take out a smaller piece. They don't want a complete leg. And everyone knows what a complete leg looks like. So I'm gonna just show you the methods of rendering the leg into cuts. I did the last leg as steaks. This one I'm gonna do as roasts and cuts. So again, we take the bone out. See, the meat literally falls away from the bone as we move down along. As I 
say we're going to have it later. Now we have our leg removed. Without the use of the knife, you can separate the muscles. They actually separate by hand. No need for a knife. Trim off any of those glands. We don't leave glands in on our, our meat. And that. Now, what we've done is we've separated it. So all we have to do then is and there we have it can be put in a net and tied up as a small roast. The same here. See presentable cuts. That's what we all aim to achieve, presentable cuts. And there we have leg rendered into three roasts. Then we continue with this. As I said, this is only Just boned out. The dog will have that, and that goes into mincing. So, over again, we get the flank. Keeping our knife tilted. That way, I'm going in between the ribs and removing all the meat and keeping no meat on it. Then we can simply. You can see now where the bullet has done damage and has bloodshot. Removing bloodshot, all bloodshot meat should be removed. Simple as. Anything that doesn't look right, cut it away. Then we come to the shoulder. The shoulder is a matter of, we take that there, lifting and follow through. Keeping our knife tight to the carcass until you come to the neck fillet and then tilt it down. Follow it down. You can see now our carcass is almost rendered to nothing but bones. So you're taking and using your full carcass. Bloodshot, simply remove. Our neck fillet actually starts not on the neck but back a bit further. Lift that there, follow up all the way up along the shoulder blade. Once you get to the top of the shoulder blade, that's it. At this point, move that gland. We don't want that going into our mincer as it clogs it up. Neck fillet, secondary cut. Then follow down. Clear. doing here we're just clearing the shoulder blade you can clearly see the shoulder blade there I need that draw a line along the side of it a line along the other side of it just tilt it down and you'll see where it pops I popped it simple as round there and follow underneath and just clear the tendon around the top of it because that's our point where we we actually pull and then simple shoulder blade pulls clear shoulder blade 
shoulder blade removed. Again, following through. As I said, this is just simple, simple boning. As I said, it's a secondary cut to shoulder. And really, it's only fit for stewing as it's tough and tenderly, but it can be slow cooked and it's quite nice. So just trim up anything and that's the shoulder boned out secondary cut ready to go straight into the mincer okay I actually did it all completely with one five inch curved knife so you don't need anything complicated and what we've left is absolutely nothing nothing absolutely nothing we can continue on of course and remove any bits of meat that will go into our mincer if you want to be really but that's only time consuming so what do you call I'll do that myself later I've given you the basic rundown on how to render a deer carcass into presentable cuts hope that was useful thanks very much